This episode of the Red Bull Ramp is by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Ramp. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster, William Martin, Gwen Rochesco, Clayton John, Chris Adamek, and Maeve Dartinez. Now, on to the show. The Red Bull Rant is a free-flowing podcast with three soccer-loving idiots who don't know when to shut their dumb potty mouths. So listener discretion, yeah, it's, it's pretty much advised. Welcome, my friends, to the Center of Rents. This is the Red Bull Ram Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Iapico. I'm Pat McDonald. I'm Truman, and this is episode 384. Rap song, rap song. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's our season wrap-up show. Sort of anticlimactic because it's been a while, but... Jay only came to the very end. Yeah. yeah. That's what work and vacation does to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's recap the year. Uh, regular season, I did. Jeez, it helps if I would look up the actual ska, uh, record, wouldn't it? Whew. Wow, I keep prepared for this one. Uh, Red Bulls finished the year 13 wins, 9 draws, 12 losses. Good for 48 points, plus 6 goal difference, and... Number seven in the East, literally just making the playoffs by one point. Uh, They lost their one and only playoff matchup to the Philadelphia Union in literally the last minute of extra time in the 122nd minute or something like that. On a goal that you really can't blame Cornell for giving up. Um, We up. Halfway through the year, none of us thought they were going to even make the playoffs. So, I did. I t- I told you exactly. They were, I told you that this is where they were going to finish, wasn't it? Halfway I, through the year. No, in the beginning of the season, I told you okay. they were. Gonna yeah, it. but I said I, halfway through the year. I had faith all season they were going to do the squeak. Because <laughs> literally, well, it, does, it doesn't take a lot to squeak into the playoffs. That's exactly. What you mean. Yeah, you just had to be in the top half of the conference. So, yeah. kind of <clears throat> what they were. They were a mediocre team. Yeah. Uh, their playoff loss to Philadelphia, while kind of heartbreaking, was inevitable. We all kind of knew they weren't going to be Philly. Maybe they should have gotten COVID a few weeks at a time. Could it be? Yeah. yeah. yeah possibly. Or maybe Philly just didn't report it, <laughs> and it just spread. Um. So yeah, that's where they end. The same place they ended last year. No, not any better, but and probably the better news not any worse if you look at it from a results point of view. <clears throat> so let's go around the horn. We're going to talk about a few different categories. Pat, we'll start with you, your defensive player of the year. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to give it to good old Sean Nealis. I mean, I think he really, you know, he was not expected to do much, especially before Aaron Long got hurt. Uh, he definitely did have some hiccups along the way. Uh, but in the end, he really stepped up uh, in the center of the defense there. And, uh, you know, you got to I – mean, who knows what the, his ceiling is on his career. But to be one of the anchors of the top, uh, one of the top defenses in the league, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we might have been the top defense in the league uh, in terms of goals uh, give, goals we've given up. Um, it's just a really impressive feat. So uh, hats off to you, Sean Nealis. I'm going to give it to the guy that, of course, we all just absolutely brutally destroyed to start the season. Well-deserved. Somehow that man, I mean, with the help of this defense, found his form and had the second-best season for a goalkeeper uh, for the Red Bulls behind, I mean, what was it, one shutout behind, I think, Robles? And that's the man who's coming back, Carlos Coronel. I mean, he absolutely played fantastic. One of the biggest reasons they even got into a playoff spot was was his performance, and uh, it paid off for him, right? Coming back for a few more years. Listen, 
I mean, we could just talk back to LA game again, the LA Galaxy game, and we thought for sure that was just a sign of things to come, but thankfully it wasn't. And I just hope we see more out of this guy in the future. He was absolutely fantastic. Saved our asses. How many times? Half a dozen times in, in big moments. I mean, hell, he saved us a few times even in the playoff game. Yeah. For some reason, when I was thinking defender of the year, I was only thinking outfield players. Because, yes, obviously, Cornell is the obvious choice. So I take, back, I take back everything I said. Cornell. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go different just to spread the love around. Uh Tom Edwards, a guy who's brought in on loan. He is not a natural center back, but he filled in heavily at center back this year after Aaron Long went down and we traded away Aaron Rotarek for who never knows what reason. Uh, but to come in on loan, not play a natural position, and I think did a really good job considering uh, helped Cornell keep that defensive shape and uh, as Pat was saying, we were tied for first in the league in terms of goals against. I think there was like two or three other teams that were with us at 33 goals against. So all in all, as much as the first half of the year kind of sucked, I think we have a pretty – if we can get back a guy like Edwards, hopefully they can do that. I think Stoke kind of wants him back, but if we can get Edwards back, maybe somehow get Goodman away from Atlanta United, we have a good, solid foundation going forward. And that could be something to look forward to. All right. Uh, offensive player of the year. <laughs> so, Trevor, you go first. Is there even anybody worth being considered offensive player of the year? I was going to say no one, but I don't know. Christian Casares, I guess, right? <laughs> Definitely wasn't one of our forwards. Um, although, I mean, Patrick Clamala, I'll say this about the guy. When given the opportunity to score, he rarely missed, which was good. He was he was pretty good on, on PKs. Um, but he missed. Did he miss one PK the whole season? I think there was one that he missed. They still won that game anyway. Um, so aside from that, at least, at least he he made good on his on most of his chances. But I'll, I don't know. I'll give it to Christian Castro's because it really wasn't our forwards this year. Um, I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll give it to Omir Fernandez. I feel like he had some moments here and there that uh, certainly showed that he might be hitting uh, a bit of his promise. So, uh, yeah, who the hell knows? Uh, for all we know, he'll be traded by next season. But for now, I'll give it to Omi Fernandez. <clears throat> See, I would love to say Patrick Kamala because he is a forward, but his production wasn't that good. <clears throat> so I think I'll give it to Kat, Christian Caceres as well. Six, I mean, I'm looking at this right now. He, Patrick Kamala scored eight goals. Christian Caceres scored six. Going from a forward to a midfield, that's uh, no, that's that's not good for Kamala. So, right, how many of those were PKs? At least one or two of those. Yeah, probably like half of them. <clears throat> and we really weren't that great of an offensive team. I mean, we only scored thirty nine goals all year, so it tells you a lot. But Caceres is a guy where if they can hold on to him again, they can build a, a foundation around him. And I think more more importantly than scoring goals, he was actually a guy that could facilitate in the midfield. And that's something we haven't had recently. If you can get some better pieces around it, that'd be good. But to have something that can actually facilitate the ball, that, that's important. All right. Uh, next up, best goal of the year. I, I'm going to go first for this one. The only... Only one I could really think that sticks out is some Caden Clark banger at the beginning of the year, but I can't even remember who it's against, whichever one was like from 25 yards out. Honestly, there's not many memorable goals that I can think of. I'll give you one. It was the game winner in the 91st minute against Orlando, and that was Fabio's header that was from Caden Clark that came from Patrick Lampala. That was the 91st minute. Uh, against Orlando. That's probably my favorite goal. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That was against uh, Montreal in October, the end of October. Um, honestly, I didn't realize they scored any goals this year. But, <laughs> They're uh, in. But you know, I'm kind of remembering one uh, in which they. Uh, it was at New York City at Yankee Stadium. Uh, I was there. I believe it was Omir Fernandez who uh, scored that one goal in that game, and uh, it's my favorite goal because. That was a goal I got to cheer in front of a whole bunch of NYCFC fans in the NYCFC suite. So that'll be my goal of the year, just for that reason. I'm still surprised you managed to get into that box, honestly. Yeah, you know, I had friends. (laughs) The right friends. All right. uh, Next category up, match of the year. Either of you want to go first for this one? I'll I'll go first. I'll give I'll give Pat a minute. Um, I'm going to give you. It's not one game, but it's a series of three games, and it was all three games against NYCFC, uh, where we allowed them to score um, one goal. Albeit we scored, I believe, three goals, but we we won two, drew one. Um, that was a big, I think, moment in the season for the Red Bulls was winning. Uh, that season series and giving them the you know that momentum to actually get into the playoffs. Yeah, that stretch they kind of launched the rest of the season to get back into the playoffs. Um, I am going to go with the only game all year in which we scored more than two goals, and that is the four zero thumping of Inter Miami down in Miami. Because not only did we score four goals, but they managed to get under Miami's skin so quickly. And it became such a shithouse game for the Red Bulls that I loved it. I mean, we saw one of their players off on the 38th minute. So I'll take that kind of performance all day. Uh, <laughs> I mean, guys, there's just so many memorable choices from this season. Uh, it's uh. No, but you have to choose one game. Uh, no, um, I don't know. I, I really can't. I mean, I kind of already used my NYCFC invasion uh, story, so I can't use that again. Uh, you were there. You, you snuck into the freaking owner's box for crying out loud, man. Damn right I did. Um, I, I don't know. Um I feel like the one that was on 4th of July weekend, that one was fun. Because I was in South Carolina. I was uh, dead to the world, just enjoying myself, and they won. I believe they beat, uh, I believe they beat Orlando 2-1, two, two to one, if I recall correctly. Yep. Yep, July 11th in Orlando. Yep. No, July 3rd. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm looking at Wikipedia. It says the 11th. So. Oh, which, Wikipedia is a failure. Apparently. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was looking at the match number, not the... And also, if it was on the 11th, it wouldn't be 4th of July weekend. So really that, you know. I know. Exactly. All right. <clears throat> Last category, team MVP. The Colonel. I, I was going to say, I think that one's kind of a, would have to be unanimous, right? Yes. By the way, it's a shame that he didn't even get nominated for goalkeeper of the year. I, I'm not saying he had a win. Of course not. He plays on the Red Bulls. Mm-hmm. I mean, he fucking tied for the, the shutout lead. And it, the fucking category is goalkeeper of the year. I mean, come on. It, it doesn't It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how great seasons BWP had. It doesn't matter how great Terry Henry has. It does not matter. They don't win these awards. They just don't. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit of shame. Get used to it. Get used to it when the Smurfs win the cup this weekend and then we'll really be buried in this in this area. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I know. Mainstream media is starting to pay a little bit of attention. Yeah, Craig Carton actually mentioned it. Oh wow. I mean they didn't really give a rat's ass, but they mentioned it the other day because, you know, they, they did go to the finals, you know, in the league. Mm-hmm. So Okay. That's stupid. Why can't I sort that? 
So I'm looking at MLS's website trying to sort by save percentage, and that's apparently something you cannot do. Well, okay. that's all you need to know. So, I mean, he was a, near the top of the league. He had 73 save percentage. So that's not a bad stat. He was doing what he did. So I think yeah. that you're generally going to give a uh, goalkeeping award. You're going to give most awards to the teams that are really great, even though New England got smoked in the first round. Well, we could talk about that, too, if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can. We can just go right to dumping ground if you guys want. Helps if I know where the sound effect is. It's been a while. I don't know. Do we have uh, off-season predictions or anything like that? Or, or We're that gonna sign a bunch of players who we don't know, and yeah, I mean <laughs> that's just how it's gonna be. <laughs> that, that is predict some weird guy from some country. Yeah, he's gonna be 15 years old. He's gonna be from, you know, from like the uh, Faroe Islands second division. But don't trust us. He's played for the youth national team at Faroe Islands. He's I mean, if you, if, if you really want to talk dumping ground stuff, we could talk about the Daniel Royer uh, will no longer be with the club. I, I mean, on a, on a playing level, uh, if he, I don't know how much more game he has in him. Uh, but I think I feel you're going to see him back, be back with the team in one form or another. I think he left that good of a front footprint on the team. Mm. He give you a great team ambassador. Um, I mean, the fans absolutely love that guy. He definitely put his heart and soul into this team. I wish we could have given him more. Um, I wish we could have seen him play more this year. Yeah. He never started, right? I don't think he started a single game. I think he did get one start in this year. Yeah. I think in the very beginning of the year, he had a starter too. No, it just, it just kind of sucks the way his, you know, his career with his team ended. But I mean, I don't think there's anyone out there that says, oh, God, thank God this guy's gone. No. You know, what a professional. What a backflip. <laughs> I mean, who can do that flip? That thing is just amazing. So yeah. I don't see him around this team for years to come. Yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite players, uh, for sure, of these past couple of years. I mean, I do think he got shafted a little this year. I, I do think he could have offered more. Um, who knows? Although, I got to admit, when he got on the field – not much change. They're still pretty much offensively anemic. So who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he, he might be done. I don't know. Um, he's not that old. I wouldn't be shocked. He tries to play again uh, somewhere, wherever that might be. Who knows? Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'll definitely – I'm going to miss where I hope what you what you suggest, that they, he might come back some, uh, in some other capacity, whether it be assistant coach or whatever. Uh, that would be nice for sure. I could see him being a uh... – Assistant to near verbals too, at some point. And, and I, I think that he does. You can clearly tell that he really loves New York. Mm-hmm. He's definitely like a New York City kind of guy. So that's another mm-hmm. reason he would probably want to stick around. You know, like I said, whenever his career, we don't know if he's going to keep playing. But if I, whenever his career is done, I think he'll definitely. He's the kind of guy that wants to stick around this area. I feel. Mm-hmm. I guess right. that also goes into like other guys who are gone. Fabio's gone. Uh, good riddance. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I can say about that. I don't say good riddance to Fabio. He wasn't a bad guy. He wasn't like sucked. Eric sucked. He he was the only guy providing assists at the beginning of the year. Oh, he was he was garbage. Yeah. But, so here's here's the thing with Fabio, right? He comes in from what a second division team. In exactly. Brazil. Which but, means we knew he was garbage. <laughs> hold on. Let me, I just want to make my point. I think we expected way more out of this guy from a, a second division forward. I think he did probably enough of what a second division forward would would do. He did yeah. as expected, right? Fair enough, I guess fair enough. But He's, Oh, he, he should be great because of how we actually consider the level of Major League Soccer, which is our problem. Um, I... I Obviously, I wish I think we all wanted more out of this guy. It, it, it does suck that he did not perform because I think we'd all be happy if he scored a shit ton of goals and he was great. Um, that's why I don't say good riddance, but I mean, Pat, to your point, I mean they're not going to miss him that much. Is I think is really they're not really missing anything about him not being on this team. Yeah. Well, when they when they signed Vladislav the Slovenic 
from uh, the Hungarian third division. I don't care that he's from the Hungarian. He better be fucking good. I mean, I know he's not going to be, but it doesn't mean I'm still not going to be annoyed when he sucks. You know? <laughs> so. I think uh, Jorgensen was finally, right? He was finally. He, he's finally gone. Yeah. Uh, our, our now signing of two to three years ago. Um, uh, Kyle Duncan left on a free transfer, which that's a. Uh, I mean, I guess the Red Bulls were competing down the stretch. And how do you get rid of your right back when you're doing that? But it just seems like a missed opportunity to not get something in return. Yeah. I, I think now, the real failure with that one is they couldn't re-sign him last year. So, um, yeah. They better come uh, full jersey this year because, I mean, I got to replace my Kyle Duncan one now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if there's any, like, I mean, uh, you might as well get a Sean Davis jersey. I mean, because even if he does not re-sign, because he is a free agent from my understanding, uh, or at least is out of contract. I don't know if he's in that window where he can sign wherever he wants. But, um, I mean, he's at least kind of a forever Red Bull guy. <laughs> you yeah. know, you might, everyone might as well get Sean Davis jerseys. So, let's see. Um so yeah, and, oh Frankie Meyer, we signed a three-year contract in apparently. Huzzah! So excited about our eight million dollar midfielder who never played. Yeah. Uh, Gutman's back to Atlanta. I don't know if there's any talk there about potentially bringing him back. I know there's talk about bringing Tom Edwards back, but Tom Edwards seems pretty hell bent on trying to win a place back with Stoke. Which can you blame him? No, not at all. I mean, I don't know what Stokes in the championship right now, right? Right? Yes. Are they near the top of the table or? I don't know. I, I'm not. I haven't looked at the championship table recently. All right, do a J. I'm, I'm doing what, it. That's what we call. That's what we started calling it when you were away. The J. The... <laughs> <laughs> you guys missed that sound, huh? Yeah, sure. we did. Uh, Stokes City is currently number sixth in the championship. So I can see why he would want to try and fight back for a position in Stoke. So it's sixth is the playoff spot, right? Because yeah. the first the first two automatically, and then the next four have the, the, the playoffs for yes. promotion. Max. Yes. <clears throat> so they're in contention at least to be promoted. There you go. So uh, I have notable. I think that's all the notable players. Yeah, that's pretty much it for notables. I think we re-signed some guy who never played, or maybe we we got rid of some guy who never played. I forget which one it was. Maybe it was one of each. Let's see. So I'm going to read the list. So we bought Cornell. Apparently it signed Frankie Mai at some point, which nobody ever announced. So Mm -hmm. Uh, declined options on goalkeeper Luca Lewis. Defenders, Mandela Egbo. Isser Drama, who I don't don't think ever played. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, Forward Fabio, which this is weird, because I thought he was just on a... On a loan, maybe there's a buy option. Yeah, but we specifically said like Tom Edwards' loan expired, so that makes me feel like we signed Fabio for a year, which is mm. kind of weird. And Jorgensen's gone. Uh, we declined his option. <clears throat> uh, Kyle Duncan, Sean Davis, Royer out of contract. Obviously, Duncan's already gone. Uh, Tom Edwards, Andrew Gutman, and Yuba Diara have. Their loans are expired. Uh, we are apparently in discussion to bring back Tom Edwards, Sean Davis, and Issa Drame back for next year. And that's that was it according to the Red Bulls end of year announcements. Yeah, well, Drame, I guess, is the one I'm like, oh, he never played. We're trying to get him back. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's uh, that's it. So now it's pretty much we need to sign wingers. We need a right back. We don't have a right back anymore. Yep. Unless Tom, unless Tom Edwards comes back, which I'm not I'm not holding my breath. Um, and uh, we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll stupidly in January be like, yep, we're going to make a signing, and then we won't make any. Unless here's my theory. This is why I'm rooting for blue team this uh, upcoming weekend. If they embarrass the organization, maybe they'll actually give a shit and sign some players. Maybe. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be happy if blue team wins. Don't get me wrong. I'm still going to be fucking miserable. But if they win and, and 
win in that shitty stadium. I mean, I know they're not playing in their stadium, but that, you know, the team that plays on a baseball field in New York wins a championship, maybe it'll wake up this organization. Just maybe. Because if I could say something positive, it is that I do think there is a core there. I think they have a core. I think they have a young core they can build around. But now you need reinforcements. You need that proven playmaker mm-hmm. slash goal scorer. That guy that can, we already talked about this, right? The guy that can put it all together. They have a goaltending turned out pretty good. Defense turned out great. They were they were missing literally one thing, and it was scoring more than a goal a game. Mm-hmm. The only thing they were really missing at the end of that season. Yep. Uh, and if they had anyone who could score a goal in Philadelphia in ninety minutes, they would have been on to the next round. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. Um, so you're right. I mean, what do they have to do to go get? I think that one really, really good player that they that they, I don't I don't know. Max mm-hmm. Scherzer's already signed with the Mets, so it's not going to be Max Scherzer. Yeah, okay, Max Scherzer. He's gone for two years, and then maybe the third year with the option. I mean, Daniel Jones might be available next year. I don't know. He's yes. he's got some wheels. He's got some wheels. I mean, there's this very simple solution. It's called opening up the the pocketbook and spending some money. We haven't seen that in a while. I know. That's why we're signing second division Brazilian players to designated player contracts, you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. Actually, speaking of designated player contracts, buy everyone who is a designated player contract, buy them down with Tam and Gam to have those slots available for better players because there is no one on this team who is a designated player right now who deserves that de- designation. Nope. No, I think the only one is technically Kamala, too. Is Yearwood still? I I don't know. The fucking roster rules are so weird. Also, MLS, just change your roster rules and put a strict salary cap in. Right. Enough already. Yeah, let's be done with it. They'll never do it. No. I don't, know. I don't think the Wikipedia page is the designated players, and it's probably hard to find it. He's jaying it. Half the box. We can move on. Uh, apparently, Kamal is the only designated player, I think. All right, we'll buy it down with Tanim Game. Okay, this work rules. Okay, sorry. Technically, Drew Yearwood is a designated player also. Yeah, well, we sold enough talent over the years. We should have some excess Tam and Game to buy these guys down with. Yeah. Oh, you guys remember designated player Josh Sims and how that worked out? <laughs> Hey. Man, this list of players since Bradley Ray Phillips is just funny. Gonzalo Verone. Oof. Sasha Kleschen, which did work out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Omer Damare, who for one year in 2016. Yeah, he sucked. Kaku. He cared for one year. Half a, a Half a year, because he got screwed over by Armas. <laughs> Josh Sims. Then Drew Yearwood and Patrick Kamala. Mm. Wow. Powerhouses. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's move on. So else, other news in Dumping Ground. Um, Aaron Long and Caden Clark have been called up for the December United States National Team camp. So good signs, especially for Aaron Long, who spent – what was he? He got injured in, like, April or May, right? Yeah, yeah. it was a while ago. So mm-hmm. He's been out a very long time with his injury, and so it's good to see him back and to go right into national team camp. <clears throat> it's the keep MLS flags fresh camp. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what that is. Well, there's no there's no meaningful game, so why not? Right. Yeah. Oh, well, you got you got January qualifier, so you want your MLS guys to still be fresh. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of Caden Clark, apparently he is going to spend the Bundesliga winter break trialing with Leipzig, and they're going to decide if they're going to loan him out to Salzburg, which makes sense. He's a young player. Yeah, Salzburg did wonders for uh, Brendan Aronson, so yeah. Hey, why not? Probably the weirdest news. So Ralph Ragnick took over 
um, mm. Man United. And if you don't know that name, you probably should. He it used to be the head of Red Bull Global Soccer. But he brought along a familiar name as an assistant for the last six months of the year, and that's Chris Armas. Former Red Bulls and Toronto FC head coach Chris Armas is now an assistant coach at Manchester United. And I saw today that it was confirmed. So mm. uh, apparently Ragnick also approached uh, Gerhard Struber and uh, Bradley Cornell, who both, I th- it sounds like he said no, thank you. And apparently he is talking to Jesse Marsh to, to become an assistant with the team. You leave our trooper alone. <laughs> I mean, it's almost Christmas time, all right? We know what that means. What idiot put you in charge? You did. Yeah. yeah. Hans, Hans Gruber took some month-old ground beef and made, like, a Big Mac out of it, you know? Yep. That's exactly what he did. I mean, that's what he was brought in to do, right? Yeah. Exactly what he was brought in to do. Uh, what I saw on... I think it was Reddit. People suggested they weren't going to um, – Struper and Carnell were not going to jump ship for six months and not know what's going to happen after that, mm-hmm. which makes complete sense. Yeah, and I hope Jesse doesn't go on that staff. I feel like – I mean, I, I, I feel like Jesse could find a good assistant coaching job. Maybe she should do it with somebody else, you know, get a new perspective. Um uh, Learn something different. You know, I think that might not be a bad thing for his repertoire. I mean, it does kind of sound like he sort of got screwed in Leipzig. You know, it sounds like he even told Rebel Global, like, hey, I might not be the best guy for this job. And they sold off some of their best players right before the season. Didn't sign any reinforcements, which, hey, that sounds familiar. Um, So, you know, but who the hell knows if the next coach then goes on winning streak to him. Who knows? And I saw something like some of his the players they brought in didn't want to learn German or something like that. It's like hmm. how was a has a head coach can you do anything mm-hmm. if you're not if literally all your best players are sold off and the guys that come in won't learn a language that the country they're playing in. Yeah. Um. Next, MLS today or I think it was today announced a new league. Uh, starting in 2023, called, geez, I don't know who comes up with these names, MLS Next Pro. Hey. I, I, they have their own weird pyramid. I don't even know anymore with this, this fucking wacky shit that they have. So according to their website, uh, it says the new professional league will complete an integrated player pathway from MLS Next through to MLS First Teams. The new league will offer young players and experienced professionals the opportunity to develop and showcase their talents while competing for an MLS Next Pro Championship. I think taking them out of USL is stupid. I mean, this just sounds like a new fancy name for MLS Reserves, which nobody cared about, Reserve League, which nobody cared about. Yep, and no one yeah. will care about this. Yeah. Nobody. Whereas the USL Championship, at least they play in cities where some fans really do care. And so it's a legit competition. I mean, that is what the German youth system does. And look how good the German national team is. So I think this is a fucking terrible idea. I hate it. Yeah, I'm really with do. you. It's, it's, it's exactly what it is. They might as well just play the games after the MLS games and everyone can go home and not pay attention. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's, you're right. It's, it's fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. It's just them wanting to just be in charge of all of American soccer. Apparently, they, they hear you. They hear USL and uh, you know the other leagues saying like, "Hey, maybe Pro World's not a bad idea." And they're like, "Ah, <laughs> threat to single entity! Abort! Abort!" Yeah, can't wait for that next year or two seasons when the Red Bulls join it. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. So starting in twenty twenty three, or sorry, so twenty. Okay, I misread this. The 21 clubs starting next year yep. will include Colorado, Dallas, Houston, Kansas City, Minnesota, Portland, Salt Lake, San Jose, Seattle, St. Louis, Vancouver. That's the Western Conference. Eastern Conference, Chicago, Cincy, Columbus, Miami, New England, New York City, Orlando, 
Philly, Toronto, and for some reason the Rochester Rhinos are coming back into this. Yeah, they got nothing going on. Yeah, why not? You think that you think they got to be paid out of this? Huh? That's the only reason I can see them going to here instead of USL. Uh, in 2023, joining the t- the league will be Aust- Atlanta, Austin, Charlotte, DC, LA, LAFC, Nashville, and the Red Bulls. Whoopity. Says, uh, in addition to Rochester, MLS Pro, or Next Pro, will introduce additional independent clubs to the league in 2023 and beyond. Dumb. Yep, dumb. Oh, jeez, it's not even Rochester Rhinos anymore. It's Rochester, New York, SC. Okay. Fuck. Right. <laughs> you have, you have fucking there. branding you could have used. What, what do you want to bet, like, USL on some por- portion of the branding and stopped it? <clears throat> wow. Okay. Uh, old name Ali Curtis will be the senior vice president of competition and operations for that Ooh. league. Back where he likes to be in the front office. There yeah. you go. Uh, I I I don't know. And do you guys see the logo for this by any chance? Yeah, it's also dumb. It looks like NXT 2.0. It's a stupid shit. This dumb shit people are coming up with for no reason. Not even NXT 2.0. Uh, it's uh, I, the best thing I've seen is it's been called a recapture. That thing you have to answer to say you're not a robot. <laughs> That's the best thing I could think of. Oh, so dumb. Yeah. All right. Uh, last thing for dumping ground: MLS Cup final. Will be taking place on the 11th, which is I can't remember if it's Saturday, or Sunday, Saturday, Saturday at 3 p.m. The Portland Timbers will be hosting New York City FC in the seventh straight MLS Cup that has featured either Seattle or Portland. That's fucking insane. Uh, first one in Portland, though. True. Yeah, MLS MLS must be loving like yay game on turf. Yeah, at noon. Mm. I don't understand. There's not much that there's not much competition on that Saturday, so I don't know why they want a well, noon, well, time. noon noon Eastern. No, it's in, noon in Pacific. Local, oh, okay. local time for okay. Port. Yeah, it's it's three for us, but locally. Yeah, that, well, that would have that would have fucked up if it was noon Eastern. <laughs> um, am fuck y'all. Fun fact: the Army Navy football game is the same exact time. Nobody watches that. Yeah, it's just but, option. It's but, literally the most boring football game in, in college sports. It, No disrespecting those players. That is a brutal game to watch if you've never watched it. It is absolutely brutal. Do you like the triple option? The quadruple option? The half option? That's what that game is. Which means Dave Gettleman jacks off to it. <laughs> that's right. I mean... Not a great football game. Ah, like, oh, wishbone. Yes. <laughs> wishbone offense. Love it. But I bet you that game still draws more viewers than MLS Cup. Of course it will. Yes. Yes, it will. A hundred percent. Tradition. But yeah, Saturday at this Saturday at three o'clock should be a time where they have no real competition. You could play it at six o'clock. Yeah. But you know, this this Saturday, like, except for that Army Navy game, college football is off because bowl season's starting soon. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah, there's NBA and NHL, but you should absolutely be able to own this Saturday. And I bet you they fuck it up somehow. Yeah, turf teams run it. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, you have a team that plays in a baseball stadium – Playing at a team that playing in what used to be a baseball stadium, but they made it nice. Just, oh no, Port, Portland! Portland did a good job of converting that stadium back to. They, they soccer, redeveloped but. it, yeah. It's just it's they need to put grass in. Come on, get yeah. with the times. 
apparently it was something with like the drainage of some river nearby and it affected the where the water table is or something like that. So like if it rained, it would really fuck up the fields. I don't know. I just <sighs> yeah, seeing this game on turf is the only saving grace is that the the timber army is going to be a spectacle. Oh, yeah. it's nuts! It's going to be a fucking wild scene there. It's, and that's that's what's really going to save the the TV. Yeah, it's having the Timber Army. It's going to look good. So I think we're all in agreement that we hope New York City FC loses. Yeah, because screw them. Fifty eight points. I don't. I don't. I don't want to fucking win. Because I, I I think the problem, the Pat's idea, that the Red Bulls are not going to do anything if if blue team wins. They're just not. We'd like to think they would, but they're not going to. No, they're not. Yeah. It's, 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 the, it's, it's the nuclear option. It's the only, thing, the only way I see it, maybe something happening. Yeah. Now, to be fair, when Portland scores goals, I will be cheering. So, yes, to be clear. You know, what's, I wonder what the uh, odds are for this game. Soccer, less. Um, Vegas knows nothing about it. It's Portland's <laughs> favorite. That much I know. Yeah, yeah, but not by much going by this. Actually, draw draw is the favorite <laughs> right now. Is that possible? Thing, right? I mean. <laughs> draw is plus 230, while Portland is plus 180, and NYCSE is plus 160, so. Yeah, don't bet on a draw. No. That's backwards. Plus one sixty is actually the favorite. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm. I was thinking negative was the the underdog. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't run my head. Okay, so New York City's the favorite. That's a shame. Yeah. All right. Are we done? Because I have one more thing to talk about. Yeah, I think we're done. All right, last thing. If you want something to root for this weekend that involves Red Bull, okay, you got to flush out whatever happens on Saturday out of your system. I'm going to give you one spectacle. If you love Red Bull, you should definitely watch Saturday afternoon, and that is Formula One because Red Bull's Max Verstappen is in a tie with Mercedes Lewis Hamilton for first place. They both have 369 points. Uh, which means whoever wins the last race in Abu Dhabi, this is the last race of the season, wins the Formula One title. Uh, Lewis Hamilton's won, I don't even know how many in a row at this point. It's like seven championships in a row. It's completely ridiculous. Uh, so if you want, if you want to go all in on Red Bull, just pray to God they get, they win the polling qualifying on Saturday and win this race. Cause I just can't see, T- I, I don't want to see another Lewis Hamilton win. I mean, team Mercedes, come on, move. It's time to move over. They're like the Patriots. Just, just, just get out of the way. All right. Get out of the way. Let someone else win a title for once. All right. So if you want your Red Bull fix Saturday, I, I think the race is probably at like 12, 1230. Um, you don't have to look it up, Jay. They'll, they'll figure it out. I'm so, looking up for myself. I'm curious. Keyboard, put the keyboard down, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's what I will be watching Sunday. I will be watching uh, Max Verstappen hopefully win the championship this Sunday. All right, Pat, you got anything before we head out? Yeah, I'm all, I'm all, uh, I'm all set. All right. <clears throat> Since it's the, the wrap up show, I'm not even going to bother going into all the other stuff. Um, after we're done, I do have to talk to you guys about something. I have an idea, but I got to talk to you first. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. So for Pat Truman and myself, this has been episode 384 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next year. Red Bull Nation on Suicide Watch on Saturday. Goodbye, everybody. Lights. Right.